All right, everyone, I'm up on this roof here. And of course, just a quick disclaimer for safety. Please make sure that you follow your jurisdiction's rules and requirements with regards to safety. It's obviously some common sense. And I'll mention a few things along the way for safety, but this is up to you as the DIYer or the installer to follow what you need to do to best safely work on the roof. All right, so let's go through some of the basic tools you're gonna to need when doing the flashing. So this is the first step that we're doing is we're gonna install the flashing and when you're up on the roof. All right, so um, impact gun works good or you can just use a drill. Uh, you wanna have a screw and I'll show you what that's for so that we can locate the center of the uh, rafter as we do our first layout. Obviously a tape measure. Um, you can use a flat bar. You're gonna need this for lifting your shingles. Uh, this is another version of it here. And all of these tools, we'll have a link in the description and uh, to where you can get them from. This flat bar is really nice because when you're working on your shingles and you're getting underneath your shingles, you might encounter some nails, uh, roofing nails, and then you'll need to, you can pull them out as you're putting in your flashing. A uh, caulking gun and some good caulking uh, to seal up the flashing as you move along or maybe any ac accidental holes uh, that you may have made. So, and a knife is always handy. And of course, uh, a soapstone marker. Uh, these are often used by welders for marking uh, steel, but this works really good on the roof to uh, mark and it doesn't harm the roof and also um, washes off easily with the rain. All right, so now I'm gonna be Checking to find my first rafter and pulling my layout. So we remembered there previously that from the fascia board we had approximately uh, an inch and a half where we had to compensate for the roof because a proper roof is always overhanged by three quarters of an inch uh, to an inch. So we want to compensate for that and we know that we have got to come in roughly uh, 24 inches plus an inch and a half so that's 25 and a half inches so at 25 and a half inches by simply using a hammer we can see that by sound and experience you can find that first uh, truss and you don't need to hit hard you hear how that got solid and when it, if I move over to the right it's hollow so I know here that we have a truss. And as I move over, it's hollow. And I'm just gonna make a V showing that's where it is. This doesn't damage the roof, it washes off after, and it's just an easy way to mark the roof because you can't do it with a marker or anything else. Underneath the roof deck, the roof deck is typically made of plywood or OSB, and it's 7 16 or close enough would be a half an inch. So by tapping out, I can find where that truss is. Now, trusses are only an inch and a half. So when we put in our legs to screw in our uh, flashing, I wanna make sure that we hit dead center and that from that dead center on that first one, I know I can lay out and get my, my flashings 48 inches on center because we don't span more than 48 inches with this particular racking. And so you'll just want to check with the particular racking manufacturer that you're working with. Again, we recommend the Kinetic. We've been distributing it for many, many years. We've sold it to a lot of installers and it works really, really well. Um, the simplicity and the ease of the product. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and find our centers of our trusses. Clean the trusses. There's more of a bouncing. It's solid when I hit the hammer. So. We're going to demonstrate this area how we can exactly find it. I have a general idea where it is, but remember we're working with an inch and a half on the truss. So we found our first truss, which was over here, which is the first one uh, in from the gable end. And we're coming out 48 inches because we have a 48 inch layout. And if you recall, we're going to be laying out seven flashings per row of rail. So now we want to find the exact center of this flashing, I'm sorry, of the uh, rafter. And th the simple method to do this is after you've lifted the shingle, just use a screw and then you're gonna drill in and you know you're gonna miss the 
uh, rafter if your screw does not bite, especially with an impact gun because you can hear it. So I'm gonna just go in here and see if I can find the rafter based on where I knocked my hammer and I had marked a general idea where my mark was. Oh, so there we can hear the, I've bitten into the rafter. Now, I don't know if that's exact center or if that's just the edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shift it over a bit. The camera here can see how I'm just shifting it over. Okay, my screw here and I'm gonna, and I've just gone past. So I know that that first screw that I had put in had might've been just on the edge because I just went over about a half an inch and I went past it. So I'm gonna just take that out and I'm gonna see if I can find the other edge of that, uh, that rafter. So I'm gonna move over another three quarters of an inch. And again, I'm just on the edge there. So if I, I know that the center is pretty close to being right here. I can feel that resistance change in, in the, when I'm using my gun. So I know I've hit a rafter right there. So now when I do my layout, and if you notice, I'm screwing underneath the shingle. That re, the reason I'm doing that is because I can seal up those holes and they're not gonna get any water in them because there's actually a flashing that's gonna go up and cover them up inside, right? So those holes will be covered up. So now that I have the center of my, my rafter, I can actually keep that screw there and I can use that to lay out and go to my next uh, rafter as I move along. Okay, so let's talk about lifting the shingles and preparing them to put in the uh, kinetic flashing or any type of flashing. Now, I wanna mention something that's really important. If you're someone who's watching this and you're just for your own interest because you have an installer coming to do install an installation on your roof or you're an installer about to do this, you cannot install racking without putting a proper flashing method in. You will void the warranty on your roof and nine times out of 10, you're gonna end up causing a leak. You cannot just grab an L foot and drive it into the roof. Long term, that's gonna cause problems. You're gonna get leaks in your roof. So you always wanna use a proper flashing kit it was raining, so, but very important that there's a proper flashing kit going in. So let's talk about how to get the shingles. So there's a couple tools that you can use because depending on how long the shingles have been sitting for. So I've got a simple flat bar and then I've actually got a shingle bar here. And simply what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the lip of, because the, the flashing needs to go in halfway, which is about six inches. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the edge. So the camera's gonna zoom in here so you can see. And so all I'm gonna do is, depending on the age of your roof, again, it might be a little di more difficult on yours or any other particular roof that you're working on, or it might be easy. This is a little bit of a cooler day. We got some, a little bit of slight rain here as we're doing this demonstration. All I'm gonna do is lift the, sh the roofing like this, and then I'm gonna seesaw on the side, right? Because what happens is on the edge of the shingles, there is a, uh, there's like a butamen seal there like that's built into the shingles and as it gets hot it sticks because we don't want the, the driving wind to come underneath and lift the shingles so it properly um, it sits in there when they do the shingles so you're just gonna use your bar wherever your flashing is gonna go you're gonna work side to side and just slowly work it up just be careful obviously you don't want to do this when it's too cold because then you'll crack the shingles if I have a bigger bar you know, it might be a little bit easier. I can work my way down to where I'm going. Now, you don't do the entire strip. You're only gonna do it where you're mounting your flashing. And then as a result, once that's lifted up, my flashing is going here. I'm able to stick that underneath and not my flashing. For demonstration purposes, I was working here. Now, what's gonna happen is when you put in your flashing and you push it up, there's a, there's nail, there's a nail flange that the roofers nail into and you might find yourself where if they overshot with their gun and they're a little bit lower than when they're supposed to you might find yourself you have to trim 
to be uh, flashing. So you can just use some simple side cutters and cut off that quarter of an inch of material or half inch, whatever it may be, and you're still going to have the protection when this flashing goes in. All right, so we can see as I got a, a shingle lifted up, we can see that black strip, the bitumen seal, and we can actually see some of the nails. They're supposed to be right there by the uh, onto that sealant so that everything sticks together. So you can see how they're not always going to be perfect. So that's why when you're sticking in the flashing, the flashing edge of the flashing should end up with the edge of the, the shingles. Because when the flashing goes in, when we might put our mounting structure, the structural part of the flashing, it mounts with the edge. So you can check in a few spots to see how accurate the nailing was so that you can start. If you have to, you can back off uh, the mount, the structural part of the flashing, you can mount it back a quarter inch and start everywhere at a quarter inch. So that way you're not having to go ahead and cut a quarter inch off each one, causing yourself more work. And when this goes in, it all lines up underneath. Okay, so let's talk about actually mounting the structural part of the flashing into the roof and then sliding in the uh, actual flashing piece of aluminum. So we've got some self-tapping screws that are going to go in and that's why I was saying earlier how important it is that this goes straight into the meat of that 1x4. We don't want to catch the edges, we want to catch that set so that we get a good bite and the structural um, adherence to um, the rafter. So we're going to line that up. We've got our reference mark. And I was talking earlier about the, the edge and how you want, to, with, you want to sight the edge of your shingles here. And we know that these are perfectly straight. And I'm actually going to use this as a reference mark to put our shingles down as we go. Um, and, the re and there can be a slight deviation. You're going to get some of that waving as whoever did the shingles. But a good shingler, those lines, when you look at them, they are nice and dead straight. And so if you look at the L foot that's going to be mounting onto the structural part of the flashing, you can see here that it's slotted. So you have some room to move and compensate to get those rails um, nice and true down the roof. So there is always a little bit of room, just like there is up and down. There is some um, up and down as well on the bottom of the L foot here. If you think about this as the chair, this is the seat, and this is the back. So on the seat, I've got the room to move it up and down. So let's talk about where this is going to go. So again, I'm going to test fit this flashing to see how it ends up. And I know that the center here, this is the center. You always want to go to the shingle below and mark it. So there's the center. I'm going to mark that down. And I want to see where this sits in reference to uh, my nails up here. And I can see that it's roughly about an eighth of an inch. It's not completely flush, and that's okay. A negligible detail. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna compensate that when I put my flashing in, I'm not gonna want, I don't have to cut them. Uh, all I can do is I can just put them in, and I'm gonna compensate for that quarter inch there. So when I lay my structural components of the flashing, I'm gonna allow about a, a quarter inch now you don't need to use a measuring tape, you're just going to use, uh, like I'm doing, but for demonstrating I'm just showing that I'm doing about a quarter inch. I can reference it with my finger, and I know I'm going to go right about there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an impact gun with a driver. This is the only way to properly do it. You could do it with a drill as well. And I'm going to have my screw, and I'm going to have my sealant. And what I'm going to do with my sealant is is I like to add, even though this is all gonna be covered up, I like to put a small dab in this first hole here. I'm just gonna put a small dab of that sealant on there. Okay, and then now I'm gonna take my self-driving screw and I'm gonna drive that straight in. Now you gotta make sure when you drive this in that you're being perpendicular to the roofing. 
So what I mean by that is that it needs to be a 90 degree angle. So you don't want to be like this. You don't want to be on the side. You want to make sure that you're at a 90 degree angle so that it sits nice and flush and fastens to the uh, structural part of the flashing. So keep that in mind. That's a tip there. You want this to be at 90 degrees. So you need to adjust yourself to the plane of the roof. So now I'm going to drive this in. I'm going to drive that down until I have, I just make a, some compression on that rubber washer. So if we look at um, one that we didn't use, there's a rubber washer here, right? And I just want to compress that down enough so that I can bite it. And then now I'm structurally sound on the roof. And now when I slide this in, this will, the flashing will line up in there. And so that'll create a perfect seal. Now there's one more step that we want to do before we fasten and put this in place. So we're going to pull this out. And on the back, you can see the stamping. You can see the U shape here with the line. What we're going to do is we're going to take our caulking. And again, this is our core class caulking. There'll be a link in the description of where you can get this product from. We've been using it for as long as we've been in business and selling this to our installers, our DIYers, and we've never had an issue. Okay, so all I'm going to do is put a quick little bead there, all the way around, and then I'm going to put a bead there, and that'll complete the flashing. Now, the beauty about having this style of flashing and using the kinetic flashing, if you make an error and you accidentally miss the truss when you're laying out and you screw beside it three inches, you have that room. You have like two and a half inches from the center of your stud here on each side. So you can cover easily cover up that error that you may have made. That's what's really nice about this product and using a flashing. It's the only way to do it, as I said. So now we're going to take lift our shingle up and we're going to stick that underneath. And that'll complete the flashing install like so. And what's going to happen is the sun hits the roof again. The parts that we lifted up are going to seal up again. Now, if you're going late into the fall and you're worried that you're working in temperatures that are a little cooler and you're worried about these shingles lifting up, what you can do is just take a little dab of your sealant, put it underneath there like that, and then just put it down. And then that'll add some additional sealant and seal your roof. Remember, if you're an installer, you wanna leave this roof in better condition than you found it. Meaning that if you see any of the shingles lifting up in the areas that you're working, just put a little bit of sealant on. All right, so another tip that I'm gonna give you is if you're drilling into your trusses, you can take a one eighth of an inch drill bit and pre-drill your hole at 90 degrees. Apply your sealant. Then we'll take our impact and we'll drive it in. And the reason why you might want to do this is if you're working in, if you're working with older trusses, the wood can be petrified and hard to get through. And if you're worried about not catching the center of the truss, the structural meat, then pre-drilling will prevent that you will prevent splitting of the truss.